terminals of a transistor are collector, base, and emitter. Right. Now, this is not the only way uh, we can, I mean, this is not the only uh, transistor we use. Uh, the um, kind of a drawback of a, uh, of a bipolar transistor is that it takes a relatively large current. Uh, current in the base controls the, uh, uh, the resistor. Um, field effect transistor was developed a little bit later and uh, it is designed in such a way that the current, contr uh, that the current controlling the uh, resistance of, of a transistor is now very small and actually the terminals of uh, field effect transistors are called differently. Uh, field effect transistor, this is a symbol for a, a a field effect transistor and uh, it, the terminals of, of uh, the transistor are called drain, gate and source. Um, and they, are, they correspond to, to collector, base and emitter. Um, and what, what happens in the gate transistor, in the uh, field effect transistor, is that the potential at the gate controls resistance between the drain and uh, the drain and the source uh, this is how uh, how it is uh, made how a, a field effect transistor is made it also has those three regions uh, n type p type and n type uh, however um, at the surface there is an insulator over here and and a conductive plate so uh, and these are these are corresponding uh, corresponding with the terminals. So if we connect uh, <coughs> this transistor, I mean drain and source, to the source of electromotive force or into a loop in which we want to control the current, uh, if uh, I mean by default current will not flow, and we can recognize why because I mean if we cut it in half, we can recognize that we have kind of two diodes. Uh, reverse uh, in opposite uh, with opposite biases, right? So, so right now, if it is if higher potential is here, then this junction is reverse biased, and this junction is forward biased. Uh, so, current cannot flow. Uh, however, when we connect, when we polarize the gate uh, positively. Well, then, then the gate will attract uh, negative charge over here, and it will uh, inverse type. Uh, so, so suddenly, it looks like the two N uh, type uh, regions are connected by another N type region. Uh, well, or at least a region with with the uh, high concentration of the same same type of carriers. This region here is called a channel. So potential at the gate controls size and existence of the, uh, of the uh, channel. So uh, when we polarize uh, the gate, transistor uh, conducts between drain and source. Its resistance drops. So if potential here is low, uh, so the channel is not formed, resistance is high, when uh, potential at the gate increases, it, it creates a channel and the width of the channel depends on this how high is the potential of the gate. Um, so we obtain ag again the same type of charact uh, characteristic, uh, except that this time instead of uh, Instead of current, uh, base current, we have uh, gate potential. So gate potential controls the uh, current between drain and the source. Uh, <coughs> field effect transistors are particularly useful in uh, uh, digital electronics. So logical circuits uh, usually have uh, field effect transistors. All right, now let's take a look at 
at uh, circuits in which we can achieve what we, what we want. We have already seen one circuit based on a diode. It was a power, uh, a power uh, supply. Um, now, this is another uh, circuit, uh, <coughs> very common. It is called an amplifier. It consists of a, uh, let, this is just one state, one could say one stage of an amplifier, so this is relatively simple. Uh, amplifier. It, it has only one uh, transistor, so amplification of such a circuit, I mean, if it is the, uh, well, the, the best transistor which uh, uh, we can get will give uh, amplification of about 10,000. All right, now let's see what is the uh, purpose of, what, uh, of each element, because each element here has, uh, is, is important. Uh, transistor is the device uh, which uh, actually performs this amplification. Transistor, uh, by controlling its resistance, we can vary resistance of a transistor with a, in a large range. So together with, uh, with the resistor over here, which is connected to, the, to one side of a power supply, the other side of a power supply is over here. So resistor and this transistor together form kind of a what? Think about, think about that transistor is a resistor controlled with resistance controlled by base. So think about if it were resistor. What would, would you recognize these two resistors together? What would they form? Yeah, it, we, we can recognize it. If potential here is 9 volts, potential here is 0 volts, what would be potential here? Somewhere between 0 and 9, right? Now, can I have 4.2, 4.5 volts here? And when I would have 4.5 volts here? What should be resistance of a transistor? Now remember, transi transistor, with a transistor we can vary, res I mean with the base, we can vary resistance between collector and, the, and the emitter. Yeah, so if I adjust resist, to what value I have to re adjust resistance of the transistor to make potential here 4.5 volts? Oscar. Let's say that this, that this resistor has resistance of 1 kilo ohm. What should be resistance of a transistor to have 4.5? Andrew, how about you? They should be equal. Mike is right. The yeah, resistance of the, uh, between collector and emitter should be equal to 1 kilo ohm. And Mike, do you recognize, I, I mean, if it were resistor, would you recognize this part of the circuit? Voltage divider, correct. This is a voltage divider. Uh, so now, if we put a transistor for which we can vary uh, resistance, it is a voltage divider with a adjustable output voltage. Yep, yep, because if I make if the base, if I make base current to be high, so the resistance of the uh, transistor is small, what would be potential here? For simplicity, think that it's zero. Yeah, that, I, that, the, that the base current is such that, po that resistance between uh, collector and emitter is zero. What would be output potential? Uh, I have a suggestion, 9 volts. Who votes for 9 volts? Uh, who votes for something else than 9 volts? Any other number than 9 volts? Zero. Mike. Mike says 0. All right. And now what's your name? Quain. Quain. So uh, uh, let's find supporters. Who support Quain? Who supports Mike? Consult with each other, actually, what will be the potential at the output if resistance of the transistor is close to zero. Talk to each other now. Brainstorm.
and and maybe let's 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 ask Mike uh, for uh, for justification. Why? And and uh, how about if Mike tries to convince us that the output voltage is going to be to be zero? Can you do that? Uh, if the resistance at the uh, emitter collector is a zero, then right. it just acts like a wire connecting the output to zero volts. So it would be zero volts. Who believes this? Kyle, do you? H were you convinced? H how about you? Uh, who has another justification? Quain, do you have justification for nine volts? <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, has Mike convinced you? Mike is right. If this resistance is zero, it's a piece of wire. Which means that potential here is equal to potential here. Well, so it is going to be zero volts. Yeah, th this is... This zero comes from the battery, this nine comes from the battery. Now, we connected this terminal to one terminal of the battery. Uh, I mean, to that zero uh, uh, <coughs> potential of, at the battery, to that reference uh <coughs> terminal. All right. Now, let's say, let's say that I make base current to be zero. If base current is zero, uh, what is resistance of the transistor between collector and emitter? High or low? We say? High. I mean, low was when base current was flowing. It dropped to zero. Yeah, now, if base current doesn't flow, uh, uh, collector current doesn't want to flow either. Think about now trans, uh, transistor uh, like a resistor with very high resistance, let's say infinite. And I think Mike will be able to, 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 to find out what will be the output potential then. Can you? Yeah, what, was the question? what will be the output potential if base current is zero, so resistance between collector and emitter becomes infinite? Yeah, so if resistance between an emitter and collector is infinite, then uh, output and potential would be 9 volts. Why? Because the other uh, resistor is uh, considered extremely small. Correct. No matter what this resist, I mean, this re resistance of this resistor is going to be small. You can also think w uh, some other way. I mean, if, if uh, resistance of the transistor is uh, infinite, what will, be, what will be the value of the current flowing this, uh, this way? Zero. Correct. Current flowing this way is going to be zero. Well, if current through the resistor is zero, what is potential difference between its terminals? How much? Zero. Zero, right? From Ohm's law. Correct. So output is going to be nine volts. Well, now... I control the car this current over here by the input. Uh, um, and so relatively small change of the potential difference between uh, the in this input, uh, I mean, the, uh, potential difference across the input can vary resistance of the resistor practically from zero to infinity, which means that the output voltage is going to vary from 0 to 9 volts, while, while the input may vary just a fraction of a volt, I mean, even a small fraction of a volt, with a change, change in small, uh, I mean, uh, uh, change in the input uh, potential difference, which corresponds to a fraction of a volt, can create the output voltage of in the range between 0 and 9 volts. All right, so do we understand the purpose of this resistor? What's the purpose of this resistor? Anybody can say that? Mike, since you have a microphone, can you find out the purpose of it? Uh, the voltage divider. Yeah, it's a part of the voltage divider, right? In order to, to change the potential at the output. Without that one, without this resistor, we wouldn't be able to vary between 
zero and nine volts. All right, now let's find out the uh, uh, purpose of this resistor. Uh, <coughs> Actually, in some diagrams, you can even see another resistor over here, which is redundant, because in principle, uh, resistance between base and emitter also acts like a voltage, uh, like a resistor. So here we have two resistors, one over here and one over there. And this resistor is adjusted to such a value that if there is no signal, we have appropriate value for the base current. Uh, and we will see in a moment why. So this one, uh, this, this resistor actually adjusts the base potential, base working potential, fixed. Uh, it's not the signal. It's like a, like a without a signal. What is base potential without a signal? Now we connect signal over here. So we can think that, this, that we connect a microphone over here. And the microphone can have a relatively small resistance. So let's find out what is the purpose of this capacitor over here. This is a difficult question, actually. It's not to store charge. Well, I'll tell you what it is for. It is to, because, I mean, think about, think about impedance of a capacitor. How impedance of a capacitor varies with frequency. So, for example, what is impedance at zero frequency? How much? Now let's recall expression for impedance of a capacitor is 1 over omega c. Yeah, which is 1 over 2 pi times f times c. Uh, so uh, if, if uh, for constant current, what is value of omega? Frequency is 0, so angular frequency is also 0. Impedance of a capacitor is very high. Uh, it practically, it doesn't allow constant current to flow through it. Constant currents do not flow through capacitors. Well, and which means that the current from, the, from this battery, from this 9-volt battery, cannot flow this way, through the microphone and back to the battery. It prevents current from the battery to flow through the microphone. If, we ha if this was just a piece of wire, we would have a current flowing through a microphone. A microphone can have a relatively small resistance, so it will, we will be just heating microphone with the battery. Uh, I mean, a, a lot of, uh, I mean, big waste of energy. We will discharge batteries really fast. Yeah, so this way, if we have the capacitor over here, current from this 9-volt battery can only flow through the base of the transistor. And it is supposed only to flow through the base of the transistor to adjust the working point of the transistor. Uh, all right, now, however, a variable, uh, variable uh, signal from a microphone, because microphone is kind of, an electrical generator. We will learn in the future how it works. But microphones produces tiny potential differences between its terminals uh, when we speak to the microphone. But this, these potential differences are of the order of, well, at least millivolts, or probably even smaller. All right, but if we connect, I mean, when I speak, uh, and, and the microphone probably will transmit between 50 and 500 hertz. So this, trans this capacitor is adjusted to such a value that these frequency pass uh, through, the, uh, through the capacitor. And as I speak, uh, the oscillations of that membrane in the microphone cause electromotive force, additional electromotive force to the, to the battery, which makes potential at this point to oscillate. Sometimes variable current flows this way, sometimes it flows that way, which means, which now causes that the uh, current through the base also vibrates. Let's take a look at this. 
Okay, so now instead of marking it as the current through the base, I mark potential, well, potential uh, at, the, at this point over here. Uh, so, with this resistor, we adjust, I mean, this is input actually to the, uh, to the transistor, so I, it's kind of misleading, should be at this point. So, potential at uh, this uh, resistor adjusts potential of the base to such a value that the output voltage is somewhere between nine, uh, uh, 0 and 9 volts. Ideally, it would be 4.5. Uh, let's say that it is 4. Uh, so, when the microphone is not connected, potential, output potential is 4 volts and it is determined by the base current which flows through this resistor and the, uh, and the base of the transistor. Now, when I connect a signal over here, it affects potential there. It makes potential higher and lower, affecting base current. So, the input now oscillates in a certain range over here, but because of the amp amplification, coefficient of amplification of the transistor, oscillations at the output now are much larger. Yes, over here we had four, uh, four volts, so now we can probably have between two and seven volts. These oscillations now are much larger than the input oscillations. Do you understand? Who understands now how the amplifier works. Why don't you actually consult with each other? How does it work? Why, why the output uh, uh, potential now is much higher than the input potential and actually why don't we now go also through the purpose of, uh, of uh, each element? So, uh, we, uh, shall, which element actually makes the amplification? The transistor, shout, however. All right, so transistor uh, makes the amplification. What's the purpose of this resistor? Talk to each other. It's to establish the vo voltage divider with one resistor being the transistor. So it is like uh, base uh, current of the transistor controls uh, the voltage divider. All right, now this voltage divider, what is the purpose of this voltage divider? this resistor together with the base. Mike, can you say that? What was the purpose of this one? Uh, it's to establish the nine volts. Uh, four, no, four volts. To establish the four volts. Actually, yeah, because this resistor determines what is this line, where is this line located? If there is no signal, then output will be this. How will have this value? Input will be will have this value. So if I don't have resistor over here, potential will be zero, which means that this line will be shifted to this point. What would be wrong with that? Only half of the signal signal will be uh, 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 amplified because characteristics grows here from zero, right? So only this part will be amplified. This part won't. All right, think about it. Let's go to another, to another uh, uh, circuit. I want now to, to switch to computer science and, uh, log and logical circuits. Uh, and, well, in computer science, you have, uh, you, those of you who study computer science, you heard about gates. Uh, and the gate, gate is a, a circuit which takes certain inputs and spits a certain output. It has to spit an out, a particular output. So, for example, a NOT gate has one input and one output. And how, uh, those of you who are in computer science, how a NOT gate is supposed to work? Yeah. yeah, the output should have an opposite logical value than the input. Uh, yes, yeah, so now in, a, uh, <coughs> in logic we use zeros and one. 
So if a logical value of the input is zero, the logical, out, the logical value of the output is supposed to be one. And if the logical uh, value of input is one, out, the logical value of output is, must be zero. Now those zeros as, and, as one, and ones also correspond to true and false uh, in logic. In, uh, in uh, circuits, it corresponds to different potentials. Zero corresponds to low potential, and one corresponds to high potential. So, a logical a NOT gate, this is a symbol of a NOT gate, it is that if potential here is high, uh, let's say low, then output is supposed to be high. If input potential is high, output potential is supposed to be low. All right. Uh, uh, and this is the circuit. When we make circuits, we want to make circuits to be small. Uh, because it's cheaper and weighs less. Uh, <coughs> otherwise, computers will fill up rooms. First computers, actually, which were made on uh, tubes, not transistors, indeed fill, fill up rooms. All right. And here is an example how to create a NOT gate. Uh, is anybody, would anybody actually try to analyze it? I mean, I, I, I want to, to stop. Uh, uh, Tian, how about you? Can you? Uh, Kyle, how about you? How about you? Uh, who, is an, uh, I mean, uh, who is an electrical engineer here? You are. Okay. So, how about you now explain how it, how it works. So, let's start, let's start with a low value for the input. A yeah, low value for the input, it means that potential at, the a, at A is close to zero, which means close to the... Uh, yeah. So, base potential is, for simplicity, think that it's the same as the emitter potential. A potential here and here are the same. Uh, so I began, can you tell me what, how, I mean the current, the base current is going to be high or low? Potential at point A is equal to potential of the emitter, zero. I mean, let's, so let's say that it's zero. Mm -hmm. I've shouted. Uh, the base potential is going to be uh, low. Base base potential is going to be low right now. My question is about base current. If potential here is equal to potential there, mm -hmm. current base current is going to be high or low? High. Why? Because it's going to a lower potential. So, so which way it is going to go? This potential here is zero and this potential here is zero. So, it'll go, um, so which way it is going to go? Towards X. No. Base. Well, why? Potential here is much higher. I mean, th here we, we have nine volts. Uh, here we have nine volts. We don't know what we have here. Here we have zero volts, and here we have zero volts. No idea. Another electrician. We need another electrician. Who? Who? Mike is electrician. Okay. <coughs> Which means actually you didn't comprehend how the amplifier works either. Mike, so ex explain what. What kind of current is, I mean, if potential here is zero and potential here is zero, what will be the base current? Zero. Zero. Yeah, I mean, it's a shortcut over here. I mean, the same potential is 
current will flow from, I mean, it behaves, uh, uh, I mean, this part of a transistor also behaves like a resistor. And you need potential difference for the current to flow. All right, so base current is going to be zero. Well, if base current is zero, the collector current, what, what can we say about collector current, Mike? Or, or how about resistance of the transistor well, between collector and emitter? It will be infinite. will be infinite. It will be high resistance. Actually, in logic, we say that the transistor is off. Yeah, because it is like a switch. Between this point and this point, it's like a switch. And we, if, if the base current doesn't flow, the switch is off. Current cannot flow through the transistor. Or a resistance of the transistor is infinite. What, what will be output potential then? Uh, positive, one. Positive, in other words, high, right? It will be the practically, I mean, it will be almost the same as potential over here. Think that it was 9 volts. Yeah, so it will be the, this 9 volts over here. Current to this resistor is going to be zero. And this resistor together with the transistor forms a voltage divider. This resistance is high, so potential here is high. Well, so we got it. When potential at input was zero, output potential is high. All right. Uh, Abigyan, can you figure out the other, the, the other uh, line? Do you think that you would be able to figure out, or, w or do we want to ask Mike? Say it. Ask Mike, right? OK, let's ask Mike. Mike. What will happen now if potential at point A is high? If potential at point A is high, then current between base and emitter will be high. Yes, yeah, so now we will have a substantial current, substantial base current. What will be resistance of the transistor? Uh, very little. Very little. We'll say that the transistor is on. So when the base current is high, Transistor is on, has low resistance. What will be output value? Uh, low. Off. Low, right? So we got zero. Consult with each other that you indeed understand how this gate works. Because on the next slide, we will have a more complicated system. More complicated circuit for another gate. Uh, Adam, did you understand this? Okay, how about, how about, why don't you actually repeat again that indeed uh, not gate uh, performs this function, right? So let's start, let's start with the first row. Um, when the potential between A and ground is... It's potential difference. Potential then. difference is high than... Oh, uh, you're talking about that one. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, when the potential is high, then the, the current flows from there to there. Right. Which means that it's actually turned off because... On. On. No, yeah, because if base current is high, this uh, transi transistor has low resistance, so, so it's on. We say that it's on, not off. Okay, low resistance, so then the... the yeah, so if this, if, if this has low resistance, then... The potential between X and ground... Potential and difference, then. Difference. If, if, pot if between, then potential difference. Potential is at... Yes, yeah, so you, you can say potential at point X at is point going X. to be uh, negative, low, low, right? Sorry. Yeah, because when Sorry. we had high potential here, we will have low potential here. Right. Now we can say between also, but then potential difference between input and the base and out, uh, not uh, input and uh, uh, ground and output and ground. Yeah, potential differences are between, potentials are at points. All right. Thank you. All right, let's now go to another gate. It's called the NOR gate. It has two inputs and one output. 
and, uh, and this is how it is supposed to work, that the output should be high only if two inputs are low. In all other situations, the output is supposed to be low. And this is how it is made. Uh, try, to, try to talk to each other now how this thing works. Uh, look that it is very similar to the NOT gauge, except that it has two inputs. And in a moment, we'll figure out what is the purpose of the diodes. Right now, think what will happen, just what will happen if we have two low potentials here. I think Mike is good, so he, he will, he will uh, explain all uh, of uh, the circuits today. So do you understand? Do, do you understand its operation? Somewhat. All right, so let's try it. Yeah, so what will happen if we have two low potentials here? Uh, two low potentials will... Uh so let's figure out what current will flow this way. Yeah. So if potential at A and B are low, it'll be equal to potential at ground. So the potential difference will be zero, meaning no current. Right. So if potential here is zero and potential here is zero, current here and there is going to be zero. We add those two zeros, we will have base current to be zero. Note that base current actually is the sum of current flowing here and here. All right, so if base current is zero, the transistor is in what state? Off. Off. The transistor is off, meaning that it has... Infinite resistance. Infinite resistance, correct. What will be, what will be the output voltage uh, potential then? Uh, true, on. Oh, high. High. Right? Yeah, this current is going to be zero, so these two potentials are going to be equal. So we will have high potential over here. And indeed, this satisfy the, satisfies the first row. Uh, let's now go to the last row. Uh, Mike, can you, can you uh, verify that indeed if we have two high inputs, the output will be low? Good. Two high inputs would mean the potential is high. And here? Yeah, the potential is also high. Right. So the overall potential of the gate is high versus the ground. Right. So you have a d uh, potential difference, which means you have current flowing. Right. So this potential difference will make a current flowing between base and uh, emitter. So the transistor will be? On. On, meaning? Zero resistance. Uh, zero resistance, correct. What will be the output vol potential? Zero. Zero, right? It's a, now transistor is a piece of wire. Well, so far, actually, we didn't see function of, of a diode. Now, I jumped from, from the first uh, 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 row to the last row because these are the situations that that the diodes were not needed. However, let's now consider this line. Yes, so input on A is low and on B is high. Yes, so here we have low potential here, so zero. Potential here is the same as potential there. And here we have high potential. All right. So let's find out currents. Let's start with this one, through this diode. Uh, you got high potential there, so it allows current to flow so through. So it allows current to flow, yep. right? Yeah, the di the di uh, how, uh, how the diode is polarized. Uh. Yeah, recall that phrase. Forward, correct. The diode has higher potential on this side than on this side, so it's forward bias. It allows current to flow that way. All right, now potential here is zero. How this diode is polarized? Reverse. Reverse, right? Current is trying actually to flow this way. All right, but it cannot because the diode is reverse polarized. So all the current flows through the base of, uh, base of the transistor. Yep. And the transistor is in what state? On. On, right? 
So if, if we have high potential here, low potential here, transistor is on, output is off. It's off. Low. Zero. Low, correct. It's oh, low, right. Well, we can recognize that the second line is just symmetrical. Now, if potential here is low and potential here is high, this diode is forward biased, this diode is reverse biased, base current still flows, the transistor is on, and the uh, output is zero. Right. Okay, let's skip this gate. I want you to analyze this gate, and I'm going to give it on tomorrow's quiz. All right, uh, I, because, I mean, we have very little time, and I wanted to explain how a radio works. AM radio now, because it has a lot of circuits. <coughs> Let's say that this is a type of a signal, so it's a digital signal which we want to transmit. So as time passes by, I will say we had zero value, then it jumped to a certain value, jump to a higher value and return to the initial value. This is the signal which I want to, say, uh, to send. I mean, it could be anything. If, when I speak, I also make certain oscillations and I can imagine this shape, th this shape of signal which my sound produces and I, if I wanted, I could transmit this, uh, this as well. If you comprehend how these one, two, three values are transmitted, you should understand how my voice can be transmitted. All right, in order to do this, <coughs> we use that signal which we want to transmit to modulate, I mean, I'm talking about a particular type of a, of a radio, uh, AM stands for amplitude modulation. So I take a certain oscillating circuit and I modulate the amplitude. Depending on this, what is the value of the signal which I want to transmit, I make the oscillations higher and smaller. So when the signal was zero, the oscillations were tiny. I mean zero. Then, then when I wanted to send this signal, I made a certain oscillations of electric field and then even higher oscillations of the electric field in the broad, at the broadcasting station. Now that broadcasting station well, what it does, actually, it makes, makes current to flow in the antenna up and down along this black line. Uh, so, well, think about what, if electrons in the antenna get up, what will be the direction of the electric field uh, here? Well, it means that the top of the antenna is positively charged bottom of the antenna is, sorry, uh, negatively charged, bottom of the antenna is positively charged. So, at this point, electric field is going to be up, right? Now, uh, half an oscillation later, it will be reversely uh, polarized. So, we will have electrons at the bottom and positive charge at the top. So, electric field will flip. Yeah, so, so actually at this point, electric field oscillates up and down exactly the same way as the current flows in the antenna. Now that electric field is tiny over here. It's so, so tiny that actually we, we are not heated up because, I mean, if we are conductors, we have electrons and, and, and if we are placed in a strong electric field, we can be fried. Uh, <coughs> all right. Now, so we recognize that over here, electric field oscillates up and down. If I place a metallic rod over here, when electric field is down, well, it will push negative charge down, and uh, sorry, uh, positive charge down, negative up, right? So current in this piece of rod will try to flow that way. When the field over here changes, current will flow up. So if I put a piece of rod I mean a rod, let's say that it's metallic, current is going to flow up and down. Tiny current, very, very tiny current, microamperes, but it would flow. Uh, well, which means actually that this, this, this part gets, sometimes it is, uh, has, uh, is charged positively, some, sometimes it is charged negatively, we have a potential difference between the 
two ends of the, of the terminal. It works like a source of electromotive force, which has a certain resistance uh, even. Uh, well, if I connect it to this circuit, Uh, do you recognize this circuit? It's inductor and capacitor. And actually, we, I, I brought it up. I mean, so, so <coughs> I picked a situation in which actually I connect, uh, well, potential over here. I mean, these two are connected in parallel. Potential over, uh, over here oscillates and so potential here is always equal to potential there and potential here is equal always to potential there. Now do you recall what happens with the impedance of this circuit? Well, at if, if impedance of an inductor is equal to impedance of the capacitor, impedance of the circuit becomes infinite, which means that current cannot really flow through this, through this circuit. It is always that current in the inductor is in the opposite direction as the current in the capacitor. This circuit is called a resonant circuit. We discussed that. Uh, and at particular frequency, and this frequency is when impedance of the inductor is equal to impedance of the capacitor, the circuit is in resonance. This current from the antenna cannot enter the circuit, I mean this loop. However, in the loop we have current which oscillates clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, with the same frequency as the oscillations of the antenna uh, of the potential over there. All right, now I will connect it, well, connect another capacitor and make this capacitor variable. So these two capacitors still behave like a capacitor. You can, do you, can you recognize that? And by varying these capacitors over here, I can change the resonant frequency, which means that I can select the broadcasting station. I will tune the uh, resonant frequency to, to frequency which a particular station uses, and then I can listen to this station. All right. The purpose of this capacitor is actually not to make uh, part of, of a bigger capacitor. It happens by coincidence, but the, but the purpose of this one is to isolate, to isolate the amplifier. Can you recognize now the amplifier over here? So these oscillations, potential difference now across the capacitor is the input to the, to the transistor. Well which means that potential over here oscillates exactly the same way as that black line. However, the oscillations now are much higher. And we can actually make, a, make another stage of, of, a, of an amplifier and another stage of amplifier. So these micro volts which are produced over here can be converted into volts over there. All right. Uh, so at this point, actually, oscillations of the potential will look like that black line. Yes, and let's now concentrate at this particular instant. Yes, so, so when, when they were small, it oscillated like that, and oh, actually I made it the other way. Uh, time is passing by to the, to the right, so, so the most current is here. Uh, <coughs> all right, now I will connect a diode and a capacitor. Really, we can look at this like a power supply, although it isn't. Uh, we call this part of the cir circuit a decoder. And <coughs> like in a power supply, do you remember what was, the, what was the purpose of the capacitor? Well, to get rid of those oscillations, but maintain at the value, at the highest value. So, when potential here is high, the diode allows current to flow and charge, charges the capacitor. Then when potential here drops, the capacitor gets discharged through the resistors. And then again, next uh, high potential comes, it recharges the capacitor, 
and the capacitor discharges to, to the, uh, through the resistor. So we have fluctuations with the, with the, which, may, which stay at a const, almost constant level over there. Now let's see that the amplitude drops from high to low. So potential over here is going also to drop and, but stay almost constant. Now I can make one of those resistors variable and have a voltage divider over here. Can you see that? Now by, by changing that value over here, I can have oscillations here to be high or low. Now know that oscillations at this point actually are not like the black one, but like the red one, which resembles the signal which we are transmitting. So now I, cannot, I can connect this signal to another amplifier connected to a speaker. So now when this red signal over here controls the current flowing through the speaker and the signal coming out from the signal, uh, from the speaker is the signal which was transmitted. So this is all for today. Thank you very much.